All right, today I want to walk you through the range equation, which is something that comes up in physics when we first start talking about projectile motion. You see, at first, this range equation is pretty easy to use. It tells us the range of a projectile or something being shot through the air as a function of that projectile's initial speed, the acceleration due to gravity, and the firing angle or initial direction of that projectile. So if we take something like a cannon, which is going to shoot a cannonball at how about 15 meters per second at an angle of, say, 35 degrees above the horizontal axis, we can use this range equation in order to tell us exactly how far this projectile is going to travel horizontally. And all we have to do is just plug in the values in this problem into the equation. You see, we know the initial speed of the projectile, that's 15 meters per second. And g is the acceleration due to gravity, which provided this cannon is being fired on Earth, is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And the nice part about the range equation is we don't have to worry about positives and negatives within this range equation. We can just plug in the acceleration due to gravity as a positive value. And last, we've got this 2 theta term, which is really just 2 times this firing angle. So here we're going to have the sine of 2 times 35, or the sine of 70 degrees. And we find the horizontal range of this projectile as it's fired through the air is 21 and a half meters. Now we use the range equation to find this horizontal range, but there's a lot of concepts hiding out in the math of this equation. And to get a better picture of really what's going on there with this equation, we need to take a look at, of all things, the unit circle. You see, we fired our little cannon at 35 degrees through the air, which meant we had to take the sine of 70 degrees. So looking at the unit circle, we had to find the sine of 70 degrees, which works out to be 0.94. But the important thing here to see on our unit circle is there's a second angle over here that also has the same sine of 0.94. And mathematically what that means in the range equation is there's a second angle at which we can fire our cannon in order to produce the same range. Going back to the unit circle, the angle between this vector right here and the horizontal axis, really the negative x-axis, is 70 degrees. Or looking at the obtuse angle from the positive x-axis, as we normally measure angles, that's going to be 180 minus 70, or 110 degrees. And ultimately what this means is we can solve for the second firing angle simply by subtracting our first firing angle from 90 degrees. So going back to our cannon, if we were to shoot the cannonball at 55 degrees, it was going to go farther up in the air and then land, but it's still going to have the same range of 21 and a half meters. And that might seem a little strange that we can fire a cannonball at two different angles and have it go the same distance. But realize, this cannonball travels the same 21 and a half meters in two very different ways. See, when we shoot the cannonball in this low shot, it's moving very quickly horizontally and doesn't spend very much time in the air because it doesn't go that high. In the second shot, the cannonball spends a long time up in the air, but it's not moving horizontally very fast. But ultimately, it has the same horizontal range. Now, ideally, we could angle this cannon so that it has both a long hang time, like this high shot, but it's also moving horizontally rather quickly, which leads us to the maximum range of this cannon right here. You see, looking at the range equation, the largest that this sine term can ever be is 1. So the largest the range can ever be for a cannonball is going to be s squared over g which in the case of our 15 meter per second cannonball is going to be 23 meters. And that occurs when we shoot our cannon, according to the math, so that this angle is 45 degrees. Now realize, there's some very serious limitations to this range equation. The biggest being, you can only ever use the range equation when we're shooting something across a horizontal surface. If we were to put this cannon up on a cliff or something like that, then the range equation would no longer apply. The other thing about the range equation that trips a lot of people up is it tells us absolutely nothing about how much time an object is going to spend in the air. So if you're looking at some physics problem, even if the object is shot across a horizontal surface, and that problem is asking you about time, the range equation isn't going to help you out at all. But even with those limitations, this range equation is pretty useful. 
Now, if you want to see this derived, I've actually done that up here in the past, but I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.